Now, another way of defining an object is by using something called an object literal. We have kind of used this, but there's another way you can use it. So you see here, I have an empty object by having this open close curly braces. I said basically have an empty object and then add stuff to it. But if you know that there are things you want in that object, rather than initialize it to an empty object, you can actually initialize it with the properties in place. So just like you have a, a string value, hello initialized, I can have a complete object value initialized up front. And I will show you how to do this. So rather than have an empty object and add properties to it, what I'm gonna do is clear these things out. And uh, I'm gonna initialize both prop and prop2 in this literal. So uh, let, me, let me break this up. And uh, I'm gonna define the properties here. So I'm gonna say prop is hello, comma, prop1, which is one, two, three. All right, so notice what I'm doing here. I'm defining an object in line with two properties. One is called prop, which has a string value, hello. Another is prop1, which is a number value, one, two, three. This is exactly what we did before. It's just a different way of doing it, right? Rather than initializing an empty object and then adding properties on top of it, I can initialize a fully prepared object in line, okay? And this applies to all different uh, data types that, you know, primitive data types that we already covered. So I can do, uh, uh, you know, prop three, which is true. So this is a Boolean, the value uh, true. Okay, now if I were to execute this and print the value of the number here, which is prop one in this case, I still get one, two, three, okay? So it works exactly the same way as we've seen before. And, but instead of having them initialized to multiple properties in individual steps, I'm defining the whole object in line. And I can do a combination of these things as well. So I can define an initial set up front in line and then I can add a my object dot prop 10 and you know add on to it okay now there are a couple of things which should strike you as different if you come from the classical background of uh, you know object oriented programming languages one you don't have the structure you can add things and remove things uh, on the fly we covered it you think of it more like a map the second thing is there is no accessor limitations in C++ or Java, you would have to define a property as public in order to be accessible directly. And you rarely do that when you write code. Uh, what you would do is have the property be private and then define public getters and setters. So you access a property only by using the getters method and uh, you, uh, you know, update the property by using the setter method. You don't see that here. And you don't have an option to control if a property is a private or a public. Any property is always accessible. Given an object, I can always say an object dot property and access it. There are ways to make that behavior happen in JavaScript, you know, the private properties and the public accessors. But for the most part, all properties are accessible by anybody. So it's a, it's a free for all even here. Another thing that's different when it comes to JavaScript objects versus C++ or Java is if you access a property which does not exist, okay? So in the case of uh, a C++ or Java, there is this compilation step that happens which checks if the property that you're accessing is a, pro is a part of the class because a class has a predefined structure. So the compiler can check if you're doing something which doesn't even belong to the class, in which case the compiler says, hey, there is an error. Since this is free farm and there is no compilation step, so to speak, in the case of JavaScript, you don't get that, that level of protection. However, what ends up happening is if you're accessing a property which does not exist, it doesn't throw an error, just gives you undefined. So notice that I have a prop, prop one and prop three. I don't have prop two. Now what happens if I access prop two? And so dot log accessing property that doesn't exist gives and I will access my obj dot prop2. If I were to access this, 
what I'm going to get is undefined. So if I reload and run, you see here, when I'm accessing a property that doesn't exist, there's not going to be an error, there's going to be undefined. Okay, so this is a behavior of JavaScript when it comes to, when it comes to objects.